Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Paranormal Theories Exposed, a show that researches different theories used in the paranormal research field and asks the question, what the heck is really going on? In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, chances are, if you're a paranormal investigator, you probably already own an EMF meter, but before we get into those, we have to first understand the electromagnetic spectrum. What the electromagnetic spectrum is, is the range of all possible frequencies of electromagnetic radiation. The spectrum extends from really low frequencies that are used in radio communication to gamma radiation that have very short wavelengths. We'll get into much more detail about those things in a second. We're going to be talking a lot about wavelengths, so let's first answer the question, what is a wavelength? First off, they vary in size from thousands of kilometers wide down to a fraction of the size of an atom. The limit for long wavelengths is actually the size of the universe itself, although in principle, the spectrum is infinite and continuous. So when we're getting these measurements, we're really measuring the length of a wave. It is a distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of the next wave. Now, it doesn't always have to be at the peak of the waves. Basically, it's from any point on the wave to the same point on the next cycle of the wave. Most people use the peaks because they are simple to measure. Okay, so here are the seven parts we're going to talk about. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-ray, and gamma ray. First, radio waves. Radio waves are used by antennas with wavelengths ranging from the hundreds of meters to about one millimeter. They are used for transmission of data via modulation. So what is modulation? Modulation is the process of varying one or more properties of periodic waveform, called the carrier signal. Now an example we all know, um, there's an analog modulation for radio, such as AM and FM radio. Television, mobile phones, wireless networking, and amateur radio all use radio waves. I know what you've been thinking. Are the microwave wavelengths the same ones that cook our food? Yeah, they are. But before we talk about how it cooks our food, let's talk a little bit about the wavelength itself. So microwave wavelengths are for the most part shorter than radio wavelengths, and they range from one meter to as short as one millimeter. When you feel like cooking up some hot dogs, the microwave used for cooking is about 12 centimeters from peak to peak. At this wavelength, microwaves are readily absorbed in most food. All right, it gets crazy. What happens is the water molecules are twisted back and forth. This twisting makes the molecules rub together, which creates friction. It is this friction that generates the heat that cooks your food. All right, let's take a little pause here. I know we're on a roll, but we're gonna take a little bit of a shortcut. Next on the list was supposed to be the infrared, visible, and ultraviolet spectrum. Since these spectrums are so widely explored in the paranormal community, we're just gonna give them their own episode. Back on track. X-rays are one ten billionth of a meter in wavelength. These wavelengths have the ability to penetrate certain materials, and that is what allows us to see inside of us and see our bones. Last on the list, we come to gamma rays. Anything smaller than one ten billionth of a meter is considered a gamma ray. These are the most energetic photons, having no defined lower limit to their wavelength. Now that we've talked about its pieces, let's start to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum as a whole. From now on, I'm just going to call it EMF. This EMF is around us every second of our lives. EMF is produced through both natural and man-made means. The Earth itself is the largest source of magnetic fields. For time's sake, we'll focus on man-made. Electricity produces two types of alternating fields. Whenever there is a flow of electricity, both electric and magnetic fields are produced. These magnetic fields pass through most objects, but can be shielded by materials such as wood and metals. Magnetic fields are measured in units called milligauss. These fields can be measured using a gauss meter or an EMF meter. When measuring magnetic fields, you may notice that the levels vary in different areas of the same room. These variations are due to the wiring in the walls, 
or to changes in the amount of electricity that is flowing. It is this constant variation that makes the idea of finding a base reading a little redundant. What's even more insane is that these magnetic fields are oriented in a 3D space. A sensor will only detect the field properly if it is aligned with the field. So with a device only using a single sensor, you must make sure that the device is pointing directly at the field to have a proper measurement. The maximum reading will be the closest to the proper reading. A tri-field or a three-axis meter is always correctly aligned and no rotation is required. Now knowing this, it creates a little bit of a problem. When using some EMF meters to detect the paranormal, they do not discriminate between the wide spectrum of frequencies. Specialized meters like the tri-field meter can be set to detect a particular energy, but most take just a general reading. What I think this all boils down to is really one question. Can we really trust our EMF measurements? Especially in today's society, EMF is surrounding us through CB radio, dishwashers, baby monitors, cell phones, Wi-Fi, analog cordless phones, and walkie-talkies. Well, that's it. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode. We look forward to tackling different theories in the future. If you have any ideas for a future show, please leave them in the comments below. As always, we encourage you guys, go out there, learn about this stuff on your own. If you're good with your hands, try to build new equipment. All these new ideas is what's going to propel this field forward. Head on over to ParanormalWarehouse.com, the number one social networking, paranormal internet website out there. And uh, that's it. Peace.